cheap, compact and kind of promising. This is the Trico Peloton WI-06, we're unboxing it, stress testing it, gaming on it and tearing it down. No hype, no fluff, just straight up answers. Let's see if it's actually worth your money. Pretty standard box, which is fine. Inside we've got user manual, warranty card and the star of the show, the WI-06. It's actually smaller than I expected, which is a good thing. We'll check out the design in a second, but first let's dig a bit deeper. In the bottom compartment, there's a 36 watt power adapter. Mine's the UK version, but you'll get the one for your region, no worries there. You also get a 1 meter HDMI cable, a VESA mounting bracket and a bag of screws if you want to mount it behind a monitor or TV. That's all from the box, now let's check out the PC itself. Compact and clean, 122 by 112 by 34 millimeters and just around 240 grams. If you've seen some of my other budget mini PC reviews, this one's noticeably smaller, around 70% the size of something like the Nipoji AK1 Plus I reviewed recently. Matte plastic shell, glossy front panel and a Trico logo on top. Port selection up front, one USB-C, two USB-C 3.2, headphone jack and the power button. Side vents for airflow. Around the back, dual HDMI, two USB 2.0, LAN, just peel off the little sticker and the DC power input. It supports triple displays, so two HDMI plus one via USB-C with display port. So that USB-C port is actually functional. You can plug in external SSDs or use it for display. It's a clever, well thought out layout. I seriously like it. Now let's open it up. Flip it over, unscrew the four Phillips screws and lift the bottom lid. Inside you'll find a 512 gigs M2 SATA SSD, yeah SATA, not NVMe, bit of a shame really because for the same price NVMe would triple the speed, but hey, corners had to be cut somewhere. And 16 gigs of DDR4 Sodium pre-installed, apparently that's also the max supported. The fan is on the flip side of the board so you won't see it right away. Right, let's put it all back together power it on and see what this thing can really do. This box runs on an Intel Alder Lake N100. 4 cores, 4 threads, up to 3.4 gig turbo. It's the same chip used in the most $130 to $160 worth mini PCs this year. Nothing exciting but definitely capable. To get into the BIOS just tap Dell a few times during startup. It's a standard AMI Aptio layout, clean and complete. You've got access to key settings like Intel visualization, basic CPU and RAM info, iGPU tweaks and some power management controls. It's more than enough for general use or light tweaking. Unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't mess with the BIOS update. It's stable as is. Here's how it's scored. In Geekbench 6, 988 in single core, 3098 in multi core, and 3264 in open CL for GPU. In Sidebench R23, 965 single core, 2932 in multi core, and in 3D Mark, 474 in Time Spy, and 1355 in Fire Strike. PC Mark 10, 3318. Also, in case you're wondering, yes, even though it's branded as Trico, the motherboard inside is from Paladin. So this isn't a rip and render machine, it's more a sip and scroll kind of setup, but for daily use it's solid. Out of curiosity, I ran Crystal Diskmark to check the SATA SSD. So we had read and 447 megabytes per second and write 485 megabytes per second. As mentioned, it's SATA, not NVMe, so speeds are fine for general use, but if you're planning to keep this long term, an upgrade might be worth it. You can swap in a bigger SATA SSD without any issue, just keep in mind, it's SATA only. Boot time, just 15 seconds, faster than some Ryzen systems I've tested. Nice. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and activated, but heads up, the moment it connected to Wi-Fi, Update began powering in. It took hours to fully settle. 
Microsoft 365 is preloaded, which is handy. For video editing, CapCut runs perfectly fine in HD. I wouldn't touch Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but CapCut is lightweight and for basic YouTube editing is spot on. It even handles some basic 4K editing, exporting a one minute 4K clip just over a minute. Not bad at all. I ran malware scan, came back clean. Web browsing, office work and 4K YouTube playback are smooth. I opened 10 tabs in Chrome, all streaming video, no hiccups. We also streamed TV and this PC can easily serve as a home media center. No issues here. Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 are included. No blazing fast, but they work. For stable connection, there's also gigabit ethernet. The CPU runs cool and efficient. Idle power draw is about 1 watt, peaking at 10 watts under full stress. During a stress test, it topped out at 48 Celsius measured with a thermal camera. Noise very low, around 30 decibels at idle and maybe 35 decibels under load. Basically silent, you'll feel some warm air from the side, that's a good sign. Let's be real, this isn't built for AAA gaming, but here's what I tested. Asphalt Legends Unite, surprisingly smooth and at 4K at minimum settings. 1080p smoother, but I wanted to push it. Grand Theft Auto 5 didn't launch, no shock there. GameCube emulation and Dolphin, pretty decent. Dolphin runs well, no stutters, no drama. I've been revisiting classic like Mario Kart and Need for Speed, and it's a smooth sailing. This little box can absolutely double as your retro gaming console. Just plug in a controller or use a keyboard, and you're set. In Valorant, no go. I couldn't find trust platform module in BIOS to fix the UFI issue. Bottom line, for casual gaming, retro emulation or cloud streaming, it works. For anything modern, you'll want a bigger budget or a beefer machine. So here's where I'll give it credit. With 16 gigs of RAM, decent SSD space and a silent fan, it feels fast enough for a daily driver. It has HDMI and USB-C display output, decent port selection and is quiet as a mouse. You even get multi-monitor support and just enough ground for light video editing in CapCut or use it as a media center and stream your favorite content etc. Will I replace my Minis Forum AI One X Pro with it? Not quite, but I could run my home setup of it. That said, 16 gigs of DDR4 plus 512 gigs SSD for $139 US is a killer deal in 2025. Most brands give you half of that. So the WI6 isn't exciting. It's not built for gaming, it won't win beauty contest, but for $139 US you're getting an N100 CPU that's shockingly snappy for the wattage. Enough RAM and SSD to avoid immediate upgrades, triple display support, VESA mount and ultra quiet fan, light 4K editing for video and basic emulation, but also a SATA SSD, it's not NVMe, and we got a slightly outdated Bluetooth. So if you're curious or want to check current pricing, I've dropped some Amazon links in the video description. If you're tech saving and plan to reinstall Windows anyway, it's a solid low cost machine for light work, home media and occasional retro gaming. If you're hoping to play Fortnite on ultra settings, look elsewhere. So my final score is 7.5 out of 10. It's a reliable daily performer, just know its limits and take the price as a warning label. Agree, disagree, drop your hot takes in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV